Well, today's video is going to be about safety because the transmission here is what has the parking brake and emergency brake on here. So that's in the middle of the drive on the on the drive shaft there. Some of the other buses, 4106 and so on, they have a drive shaft brake, but it's mounted to the differential instead of on the transmission. But on these buses, it's here on the transmission. But we're going to get rid of that because it's got the broken drum on it, and it it doesn't hold back real well. What it really in real life, it's a fire starter because uh, you can accidentally leave it on. You don't really feel the power difference. Um, it doesn't really stop it on a steep hill usually, and you can't adjust it too tight or it'll just rub and catch on fire all the time. So multiple buses that I've worked on have had fires because that thing's been left on. And that's probably why that brake drum is cracked because it got left on, driven down the road, started a fire, somebody doused it with water, and the rapid cooling of the cast iron is what caused it to do that. So, but anyway, so we're gonna take this bus here, which has uh, just regular, obviously it's air brakes, but this is nothing like the air brakes that you have on a modern vehicle. So this is just a single chamber as you see it there. So just like what you have on your air brakes on the front of a vehicle, uh, the front tire, they're a little bit larger than those, but that's all it is. It's just one diaphragm that pushes out. So if you lose um, air pressure, you have no brakes whatsoever. That's when that transmission brake thing comes in handy because it'll stop you but we're gonna convert this over to spring brakes. So if you lose air pressure, a spring automatically deploys it. Uh, I see a couple of other warning signs here, some things that might be going on where these tires are chunking off at the edges. Usually that's a sign of a bad radius rod uh, bushing or rear wheels out of alignment. So I'm gonna need to look a little closer at that stuff too. So anyways, we're gonna pull these wheels off here and I'll talk to you a little bit more about what we're gonna do with the brakes, but it's all about safety today. Well, I've done probably 50 videos about these little covers and why not to use them and why you don't want to use them and because they always hide problems or hide things that are wrong uh it was 50 50 no uh, that's a lie it was 90 percent to 10 percent that this wasn't going to have the proper studs on it for aluminum rims because we see that so often but back here on the rear this is the rear wheel there's no excuse for not having the right lug nut because that inner lug nut comes in different lengths look how much thread that's actually holding that on and this thing's driving around like that how many threads do you see in there i didn't fake it that's not loose i have all i did was pull this first cap off and that's what i'm looking at right now that's just a that's just a lug that inner lug nut that comes in different lengths you can just buy that in a longer length and put in it. Usually there's a steel wheel, which it looks like this is steel behind there. So the studs for the wheels are the correct length. But that is absolutely ridiculous. It makes me so angry. It, it, that should not be on there. They're probably all like that. I mean, there's a chance that I only pulled the one off and one's like that, but let's be honest. They're probably all like that. Look how short they all are. Man, man that's crazy. I mean, it looks like somebody bought new lug nuts to put on here. They just didn't buy the right kind. They bought for a steel wheel, not an aluminum wheel, which is much thicker. This will be a good demonstration, too, of the Milwaukee fuel here. Um, this thing is absolutely amazing. Um, it's super, super powerful. And I'm gonna make sure that I got it in the powerful mode here. This is on the right side, so these are standard threads here. But you can see, if you look in the lug nut there, half, like half of the threads were being used to hold that on. See it? That's insane. I don't have to worry about using a, a pad on here scratching because this top pad is stainless steel and the socket won't scratch it. These are all really bad. They're only holding them halfway on. there um that only half of that lug nut was actually holding it on 
That should be obvious to you there. I think so. Crazy. I, I hate those little covers, but when you put aluminum rims on buses, man, you need to make sure you got the right studs. That's that's very. Uh, this thing bouncing down the highway killing is going to kill somebody. These are 13 16 square drive, and, and this is what holds the wheel on. That's why this is the lug nut. Um, and they make this in a longer version for the aluminum rim. And they're only, you know, a couple bucks a piece. And it looks like somebody put new hardware on here already. These look new. They just didn't put the right thing on. taking it off and it gets loose then it spins super super fast and you want to, sometimes the, the nut goes flying and different things so i love how that can, you can control that speed with it and you can adjust the torque settings for consistent reliable results you still want to verify them with the torque wrench but that was loose the last one one more, one more. There, you can see the brake chamber. It's just a single chamber. There's no dual. There's not an extra one with the springs. That's a little easy for you to see there. So I'll have to just change some plumbing on here. Um, the brake chamber, I believe, will fit. I've done this before in a 4104. Um, uh, this is a later model with the steel here, but I'm 99% sure it'll just bolt right on. Um, the only concern is that when you go to cage them, you have to raise the body up just a little bit higher. So if you have a blown out airbag, you'll have to jack the body up in order to cage the brake. Um, but, other, but the safety factor of having them on here way uh, outweighs any other issue uh, where you can cage them. Looks a little moist around the brake drum there, but it doesn't, it's not super gooey. So that could just be old stuff stuff but I uh, definitely want to inspect it real good and make sure that there is no leaky wheel seal there okay. oh, I see that that's always nice Just required a little extra persuasion. Oh, just like that's gonna require. Nothing severe. Brake drum looks pretty good. We'll get a measurement on it, but it looks pretty good. Need to look at the line 
linings look relatively new, but you can see there's definitely some grease and oil buildup on them. These holes where the bolts go are completely filled in with dirt and oil and grease. So it's got a little bit of a wheel seal leak. It needs to get taken care of. So that's the inside of the wheel seal. We can see where it's been leaking down there. I like that better. That's a horrible video, but it's all gooey. So just starting, not horrible, but needs to get taken care of. Okay, so now we're gonna remove that uh, brake drum, or uh, brake chamber, uh-oh, thunder. I gotta take the clevis out of the slack adjuster there. And then we'll check the S-cam bushings and everything too. Okay, so these are the chambers I'm replacing it with. So basically there's a big spring in here that when there's no air pressure, the spring pushes it forward. And then when you uh, pull the parking brake valve to turn it off, it fills this with air and the air holds the spring back. And if you ever use air, then the spring automatically applies. And then the service brake works the same. When you step on the brake pedal, the service brake pushes it forward. So this is a much better, you know, this wasn't invented in 1950. It's far superior and it's pouring down rain here. So we're quitting for the day. Boy, is it pouring. Don't you know? Well, he's got a long, hard ride. You know, plenty of the silver sides. Get that bus grease monkey on the road. Well, he's got that hammer down and that 47 hound. It's that bus grease monkey on the road. He travels all around and he's coming to your town. Get that bus grease monkey down the road. Watch that bus grease monkey do his thing. Thirty years behind that barn, cause it don't run worth a darn. Watch that bus grease monkey make it sing. He knows in Detroit there's no doubt upside down and inside out. It's that bus grease monkey, don't you know? Saving buses far and wide in that old blue silver sides. It's that bus grease monkey, don't you know? He's moved his family to the hills of Tennessee. Watch that bus grease monkey make his home. Bringing buses back to life with the help of his dear wife. Watch that bus grease monkey get it done. When he travels town to town looking on them old greyhounds. It's that bus grease monkey, don't you know? Saving buses far and wide in old Lily the Silver Sides. It's that bus grease monkey, don't you know? 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 